everybody, this is uh, Jim at sp500chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 index. Um, we're doing our video where uh, we look at the action that occurred on August 10th, that's Friday, uh, 2012. And we're going to also take a look back at the last week in general. But before we do it, just need to remind you that the website and this video are for educational purposes only, and nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research, and you need to make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. Uh, I am not a licensed financial professional. I got no plans on becoming a licensed financial professional because I'm perfectly happy just being a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's take a look. Starting out here on a 30 minute chart, I just want to show you that in the grand scheme of things, the S&P is spending more time up in this expected resistance area than it has in a couple months. If we go to an hourly chart, you can see that there has been a real tendency to come up to an area, then pretty quickly reverse. Come up, pretty quickly reverse. Same here. This looked a little bit more bullish here, but then it's still reversed. Now, we are... We actually, for the last one, two, three, four, five, six sessions, have stayed within a really uh, pretty tight range. And what would that range be? Well, you know, we can, uh, I guess we can just draw a little, if, uh, come on, program. Well, forget it. No, we're not going to do, oh, there we go. Um, we have been in a range that has, a, a, at a top level, Pardon me, while, while whatever in my operating system is supposed to be making this an enjoyable experience fails to do so. I am clicking on everything I know to click on. There we go. We're, we, we've got a top level of around 1407 and a low around 1388. So, uh, but really, I think for the, for the past week, we have been stuck in about a 15-point range, right, right here, in between uh, the, the the inside this rectangle. Let's get rid of the rectangle. I mentioned along the way that it looked to me as if we were maybe making a sort of a head and shoulders pattern here. If if it ends up being one, it would be of the complex variety, even though it's it's still a very small pattern. And it would be complex because we have two left shoulders, a head, and then potentially two right shoulders. But for some reason, late on the day, even though this was looking sort of like a little bear flag after a breakdown from this neckline, late in the day on Friday with roughly, oh, let's see. Pardon, pardon me just a second. With roughly 20 minutes to go, there was this sudden burst of buying that took um, the S&P not only back into uh, that, uh, over that neckline, but also actually took it over the top of a small um, but possibly significant resistance line here shown in the 10 minute chart and now in the 5 minute chart. So uh, last week was something of an enigma. Um, I felt that there was a decent chance that we would come up and tag the neckline of last spring's uh, head and shoulders top. Here it is. There's the head and shoulders pattern. Here's our neckline. And if we go back to the 30-minute uh, chart, that neckline will be in the proper place. And you can see we effectively pretty much tag that line. Now, what's going on right now? I cannot be absolutely certain. All I can say is I would be very careful here 
Um, and I am being very careful here because this still has a sneaky topish look to it where we made a series of highs and now the market has started to give some of that back. Despite that late day strength, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the futures this evening. Uh, I thought about doing this video after futures trading started at, uh, at uh, 6 p.m. But, you know, unless there's just a huge move in the futures, um, I, would, uh, I would not put a lot of faith in what happens early when, when futures open. As a matter of fact, uh, it would not surprise me if, uh, if the futures open up simply based upon um, uh, Romney's pick of uh, Ryan as the VP. And the reason I say that is, is that uh, I, I think Ryan is perceived as being perhaps one of the most knowledgeable people in Washington when it comes to, uh, to uh, finances, the deficit, and, and what's really going on um, with, with legislation. He seems to be a real student of, of economics and, and policy as, as it relates to economics. So it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, if the business community sensed, uh, maybe senses that this would be a positive. But uh, that aside, we, we, we essentially are almost starting off, not quite, about where we left off. And that is, uh, you know, right in this range. And, uh, you know, when you look at this neckline and when you look at the rough line of resistance that is ascending and this rough line of resistance uh, support rather that is ascending. It just sure looks to me like the market is due for another pullback. But the way it's hanging around in this level, I would say um, I wouldn't short it here personally. I thought about it after this breakdown early on Friday of this line. But when it started to come back and just hang around for a while, I said, no, I'm not going to do that quite yet. So, uh, Anyway, guys, that that's kind of the, the the call for Friday. It's 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 sort of a non-call because we we had a sign of weakness followed then by a short-term sign of strength. And frankly, I don't know exactly um, where to put that into perspective. All I can tell you is that this should be resistance, and it's been resistance. It was resistance on Tuesday. I think it will be some resistance tomorrow. And we've got this big, uh, you know, decent-sized gap right here. I'm not a big believer that gaps have to be filled. I want to say that right off the bat. Um, I think people can really make a bad mistake when they see a bunch of gaps and they say, well, I'm going to short the market because we got a gap. Well, I want to remind you there is a gap around 56 in, in the uh, NASDAQ. And no, that's not... 5,600. That's not 560. It's 56. And uh, hopefully uh, folks are, are not still waiting to cover their shorts um, that they, uh, that they uh, uh, got locked into at 58. So look, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, sort of not enough information. Hopefully as we get into the week of the 13th, We'll see a little bit more going on in the chart, and it gives us a little clearer feel for where we may be headed for the week. Right now, I've got an ambiguous, kind of ambivalent feeling about things. Um, you know, this, this little head and shoulders top right here, what it looked like, um, could also end up being a consolidation with this line being taken out late in the day. That is possible. And if that's the case, the market, you know, could be trying to take out this neckline. I want to remind you that one of the reasons why that is a, a possibility is that despite this, let me go back to the two-hour chart again, despite this head and shoulders top right here and how fairly large it was, it has already made its minimum uh, 
a target. And it did that uh, when, when we got to roughly, oh, I'm going to say in the, in the 12, high 1280s, around 1290 or so. So this pattern back here, we really can't necessarily count on that to create more downside other than what we've already got. It may, but we can't count on it. If, we, if, if instead we had come down to 1320 and then slowly worked our way back to the neckline, I would say the neckline should be strong resistance and this market still has to get down to the 1290s, high 1280s. But I can't say that because this pattern has already fulfilled what is built into it as a, as a tar minimum target for, for the downside, uh, uh, the degree of downside that would come out of it. But still, necklines tend to, uh, to still have influence over the markets. So let's see what happens with regards to this neckline. And let's see if that late day rally on Friday um, the 10th, let's see if maybe that was a head fake. It, you know, maybe, maybe not. Who knows, maybe the market got, uh, I won't speculate. Besides, I'm not even supposed to talk about fundamentals. But anyway, that's the video for this weekend. Thank you for taking time out of your day uh, to watch it. Thank you uh, if you're a subscriber. If you're not, thank you for watching it anyway. Uh, all I ask in return is that you consider what uh, $19.95 per month might mean with, uh, as it relates to getting these videos without a delay, getting a daily video instead of having everything released for the week at the end of the week. Just think about it. So, uh, frankly, this past week, it wouldn't have done you a whole bunch of good because the market really didn't do much this week, um, one way or the other. So, uh, however, there have been many times when we've been able to project and, and see some nice moves based upon some reliable chart patterns. And I'm hoping that in the upcoming weeks and months, we start to get some more reliable things coming online. But uh, until then, we, we still look at it and we still try to make as much sense as we can out of the chart. And I just want to thank you for being a part of the process. Take care.